Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation. In this video, the second of a set of three, we're going to be talking a little more about Intel Endpoint Management Assistant and Intel Active Management Technology. In this video, we're going to focus on discussion of Intel provisioning modes and include a demo of uh, AMT profile creation inside of Intel Emma itself. Let's begin. All right, we're going to start with a discussion of provisioning modes. We support two provisioning modes with Intel Emma and Intel AMT. First, we have host-based provisioning, also known as client control mode, and TLS PKI provisioning, also known as admin control mode. There's a few differences here I'd like to highlight between these. First, host-based provisioning does not require a provisioning certificate. It only needs OS admin rights. Where TLS PKI provisioning requires a certificate in order to provision Intel AMT. Next difference I want to talk about is with user consent. Because host-based provisioning only requires OS admin rights, we have mandatory user consent for use cases including booting the BIOS and KVM remote control. In TLS PKI provisioning, user consent is optional and can be turned on and off as needed by an administrator. One other thing I'd like to point out with host-based provisioning is that it does not require user consent for power control commands. The last difference I want to talk about is with configuring Intel AMT over Wi-Fi connections. Host-based provisioning over Wi-Fi works without any additional configuration. In contrast, TLS PKI provisioning over Wi-Fi requires additional configuration. The TLS PKI DNS suffix must be set on each device to match the DNS suffix of your TLS PKI provisioning certificate. As of the recording of this video, this setting must be entered by hand, and I'll detail the process a little later in the video. Finally, you're not locked into using just one of these provisioning modes. You can use both if you want to. For instance, you can use host-based provisioning for all your laptops and use TLS PKI provisioning for digital signage systems or other unattended devices. So as we talked about with TLS PKI configuration, you have to have a certificate. And let's dig into a little more of the detail about that. Uh, first, you have to get a provisioning certificate, and that proves that you are an authorized person to configure AMT on that device in the more permissive admin control mode. And that certificate is typically obtained from a third-party certificate authority or can be generated on your own if you need. And if you are going to uh, use that certificate, there's also some network considerations to go with uh, TLS PKI configuration. First, you have to have DHCP option 15 set to match the domain suffix on the provisioning certificate you're using. And if for some reason a DHCP option 15 does not match your provisioning certificate, you have the option of manually entering a alternate DNS suffix for AMT to trust into the MEBX on each device, which does require you to touch the system. Let's dig into a little more about the certificates now. So as I just mentioned, we have the support for third-party certificates, which you would purchase from a third-party certificate authority on the internet, or self-signed certificates. The advantage of third-party certificates is that all you have to do is have a registered domain online, you obtain the certificate, and there's nothing else to do inside of AMT to get started with this. If you'd like to learn more about buying third-party certificates, take a look at the Getting Started Guide at intel.com slash amt for details. So with self-signed certificates, the process is a little bit different. You don't have to get one from a third-party certificate authority. You can create it on your own certificate authority. However, Intel AMT is not going to know to trust any certificates issued by your own certificate authority until you enter the root CA's hash into Intel AMT, which again has to be done by hand. You have to touch the system in order to add that in. And once that's been added in, you're good to go with using your own certificate authority and using your own self-signed, self-created Intel AMT provisioning certificate. The last thing I want to point out when it comes to self-signed certificates is working with Intel AMT version 11. If you do a full unprovision of Intel AMT, which is what Intel Emma does when it unconfigures a system, any of those root cert hashes you've added in by hand will be removed from the system. So please bear that in mind as you manage your devices through their life cycle. Let's talk about the process to follow to enter a custom root cert hash by hand if you need to do that. First, you need to log into the MEBX, or the Management Engine BIOS extension, uh, when the system is booting up. The key is to do that very somewhat between OEMs, so take a look at uh, on-screen prompts to see what the right option is for you. Once you get to the login screen for the MEBX, go in. You may have to change the password from the default if you've never been in the MEBX before or configured AMT. Once that's done, you just go to the AMT configuration, the remote setup and configuration, then to TLS PKI, then choose the option to manage hashes. And from there, you can hit the insert key and add in your own CAs 
root cert hash so that Intel AMT will know to trust any provisioning certificates that come from that CA environment. Next, let's shift over to talking about that custom TLS PKI DNS suffix. So again, if the certificate you have for configuring AMT in admin control mode and that TLS PKI configuration mode has a domain suffix that does not match what you get from your DHCP server in option 15, this is where you can go and override that setting by telling AMT to trust any certificates that have the specified DNS suffix. So just like before, you'll need to log into the MEBX. Once you're logged in, you'll go to the Intel AMT configuration, choose remote setup and configuration, go to TLS PKI, then go to the option to enter a PKI DNS suffix and enter that value into the field below. One thing to point out is you can only add this TLS PKI DNS suffix into an Intel AMT system that is unconfigured. You'll not see this menu option for a system that has already had Intel AMT configured. All right, so let's talk about 802.1x and Intel AMT. So we support 802.1x for both wired and wireless connections. At this time, the only supported authentication protocol we have is EAP TLS. And at this time, we only support Microsoft CAs. And one thing I also like to point out is when you configure 802.1x settings for Intel AMT, they're done in their own sub profile. So you can go through and set up one configuration for working with 802.1x and apply that configuration to multiple Intel AMT profiles inside of Intel EMMA. All right, with that, let's stop with the slides and actually start with the demo here. And let me give you an example of the process of creating a new profile for Intel AMT inside of Intel EMA. All right, I'm logged into my Intel EMMA environment. Let's talk about managing Intel AMT profiles. When I click that link up at the Quick Links option, you can see it took me to the endpoint groups into the Intel AMT Profiles tab. And we've got three things to focus on here. Let's talk about the sub-profiles first. As I mentioned, we have sub-profiles for 802.1x, also for wireless. That allows me to share those wireless profiles or those 802.1x profiles across multiple Intel AMT configurations and just saves the duplication of work. So if I need to change my 802.1x profile, I only have to do it in one place and then it'll automatically change with any of my other AMT profiles that use that sub-profile. Likewise for Wi-Fi. So let's just take a look at what those look like first. 802.1x profiles are fairly straightforward. This is where you go through and we'll set up everything to get 802.1x up and running in your environment and save this as a new profile. Once you have your 802.1x profiles defined, you can come back and manage your Wi-Fi profiles. So if you are going to use 802.1x with Wi-Fi, this is where you would go through and specify the wireless settings that you would use. You know, it's going to be a profile with a name. You specify the SSID. In my case, I'm doing a pre-shared key model here, so I have the option of putting in my security key. Whereas if I chose to use 802.1x as part of my process, this is where I'd have to go through and choose that 802.1x profile that I'd created in that step that we just talked about. Once that's done, you save the Wi-Fi profile, and you're ready to go on to creating the EMT profile. You start by giving the profile a name and a description. And here you come to your first choice. Do you want to use client-initiated remote access, which again is designed for working with systems that move around a lot for people who are on the go or working from home, or the option to use TLS security, again, which is designed for systems that don't move around a whole lot or are going to be on a corporate network behind a corporate firewall, that sort of thing. So I'm going to stick with the SIRA option for now, and we'll move on to power states. So power states, you have a couple options here, and you get to decide, do you want AMT to work all the time, even when the operating system is down, or for some reason, only when the operating system is running? We do give the option, however, we highly, highly recommend sticking with the default of any time the system is connected to power. That way you can manage it even when the OS is down. Next, we have management interfaces. This is where you can go through and choose the features of Intel AMT that you want to support. So if for some reason you wanted to enable just KVM remote control, but not any of the other features, this is where you could do that. In my case, I'm just going to select everything here. Another thing I'd like to point out too is the user consent timeout. If you do enable user consent or have to use it because you're using host-based configuration, I recommend setting the timeout uh, to a larger value than the default of 60 seconds. In my case, I'm just going to make it 300 seconds. The main reason for this being that depending on the person, where they're working from, the quality of the network connection they have, I have seen times where it can take longer than 60 seconds for the user consent process to go. So it's better to pad that and give yourself a little cushion there just in case you are working with somebody who is on a low quality remote network link. 
Next, we'll talk about FQDN source. In most cases, you're going to stick with the default option here of shared with the OS. If you'd like to learn more about these other options, take a look at the documentation or take a look at the pop-up help that we include here to see if one of these is a better fit for how you configure AMT in your environment. Next, we have IP address. Now, in my case, because I chose a CIRA-based configuration profile to create, I want to stick with the default of, from the DHCP server. And that's because I'm thinking about use cases like a person with a laptop who's going to be working from home, perhaps working from a hotel, working remotely, any place where you're going to find that they're using dynamic addressing. Now, if you are in an environment where you have to use static IP addresses, that is going to require you to use the TLS-based profile. CIRA-based profiles do not support static IP addresses at this time. Next, we have Wi-Fi. There's a few things we want to talk about here. First, you can have Intel AMT work with Wi-Fi uh, if it doesn't have any predefined uh, Wi-Fi profiles, but I really recommend if you have an environment where you want to use certain Wi-Fi networks that you predefine those profiles. We talked about that process just a moment ago. So in this case, I'll choose that I want to use selected Wi-Fi profiles, and I'll choose my lab network connection. And you'll see a couple other options down here at the bottom. Uh, synchronized Wi-Fi profiles, and enable Wi-Fi connections in all power states. So after I've chosen the profiles that I want to use here above, I still want to you know, have a, an environment where I know that if my end user comes home uh, to work from home and their home network is obviously not going to be in my predefined profile list, we can use the synchronize with host platform Wi-Fi profiles option to allow synchronization of any Wi-Fi network that's joined in Windows with Intel AMT. And then finally, enable Wi-Fi connections in all power states. Similar to what we talked about in the other power states, if the system is asleep, offline, hibernated, we want to give AMT the opportunity to wake up, take ownership of the Wi-Fi NIC, and get the system online so you can take advantage of all these great Intel AMT use cases when the OS is in a low power state or shut off. And finally, we have our wired 802.1x option. And this is where you would go through and specify the 802.1x profiles that you would use with this particular AMT profile. Once you have all that done, all you need to do is hit save, and you're all set. Now we're going to finish off by talking about how you would configure AMT with one of these profiles. So I'm going to go back to my endpoint groups here. We'll bring up this test option here. Let's take a look at that configuration. And we're going to see an option here for Intel AMT Auto Setup. We're going to choose that. And basically what this means is anytime a new device joins this test device group or endpoint group, we can go through and say, automatically turn on AMT. So this is where we choose the provisioning profile we want to use. We'll grab our demo profile that we just created. And again, going back to that activation method, you know, the two different options we have for host-based provisioning or certificate-based provisioning, we would choose that here. In my case, I'll choose certificate provisioning. Now I need to specify an administrator password to be assigned to that system. This is a password that I'm going to use and store away wherever I keep my secrets. Then here you'll see an option for the MEBX password. We talked about that in a previous slide. That's where you can go through and interact with Intel AMT settings on a device-by-device -device basis before it boots into the OS. Uh, for my case, because I'm working in a lab environment, I'm going to choose to not randomize that password because I find that I go into the MEBX on a fairly regular basis to adjust settings for doing things like making these demo videos. However, if you're working in a production environment, we highly recommend using the randomized password option so that there's not one static password that a person could use to get into the MEBX if they were to find out what that password is. Then finally, I have a drop down here where I would pick the certificate that I would use to go through and provision the systems in my environment. In my case, I just have one here with the domain civics of vprodemo.com. Once that's done, I hit save and I'm all set. Anytime a new device joins the test endpoint group, it'll automatically be configured with Intel AMT as soon as the agent is installed and sees AMT capabilities on the system. Finally, if you want to configure AMT manually on a device, you have the option of coming into your endpoint group list, bringing up the information for a particular device, and going to the provision Intel AMT menu. Now this device I'm working with is already provisioned, but from here you could choose the same activation method we talked about before, either host space provisioning or being able to choose uh, to use TLS PKI provisioning if you want to do admin control mode. Again, you choose TLS security or a CIRA tunnel option and uh, add an admin password. Once that's done, you can start provisioning the system manually. 
One thing to point out, as we talked about before, is when you use this manual provisioning method, it's not going to do Wi-Fi profiles. It doesn't support 802.1x. It's going to give you the base configuration. Then you'll have to go in for the device on the Intel AMT tab. And after configuration, add things like Wi-Fi profiles, for instance. This is really built just for debugging purposes and not practical for scale-based activation of AMT. Well, that'll do it for this demo. Thanks for watching.